Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 10th. It is an absolutely beautiful day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. 65, 66 uh, right now. We're going to get up to 80 something. Uh, can't wait to get out there and enjoy some of this weather. I know a lot of you are dying from heat right now. My thoughts are with you. I am just finishing, and in fact I believe I'm done, a bowl of Pegasus in this uh, Taubert Ligne Britannia billiard that you've seen me smoke before. And the reason I'm smoking this is that I'm about to break in a new pipe. And the fact that I'm smoking Pegasus in this is actually important because this is the first time I've smoked anything other than Honan Bookshop in this pipe since I got it. And that's my break-in method. And I wanted to talk a bit about that today because some of you might be curious. Um, as with all things pipe smoking, there are no rules. If you're enjoying it, you're doing it right. But this is a method that I've kind of settled on over the years. And there's a lot of different ways you can break in a pipe. I guess the first question is, I'm gonna, this is out, so I'm gonna put this down for a bit. First question is, what? why do you even have to break in a pipe? Well, primary reason is you want to get some cake on the, on the walls. Um, just to sort of make sure that everything, well, first off, you're not burning briar. So it's good to have a little bit of cake there to protect the briar. Cake, if you don't know, is um, carbonized tobacco as well as some carbonized briar. Uh, the two kind of meld together and make this nice barrier. It's important to have even cake, and that's really one of the key things about breaking in a pipe. You, you want it to be even because you, it will continue to grow as you smoke it, and of course you have to ream it back after a while. And if it's getting thicker in one area than the other, that could lead to a couple of problems. I mean, one possibility is if you, you know, sometimes people don't smoke all the way to the bottom of the bowl, and if you don't have cake on the bottom of the bowl, you're going to be burning the briar uh, a bit down there. And eventually you could get a burnout. Also, if the cake is uneven, it can expand and contract differently, and that can lead to cracks. So, and you know, these are minor uh, issues. Not, I shouldn't say they're minor issues. They're, they're not super likely to happen. It's not like if you don't pay attention to breaking in, your, your pipe's going to explode on you. It's just something that is good to do. Also, I find the pipes just smoke better after a break-in period. Don't know why. Something magical. Uh, so you hear lots of different versions of this. Uh, you know, some people say you have to put a coating in it. You have to put some honey in it or something like that. That probably helps with the formation of the carbon. Um, you know, honey is sugar, which is basically a hydrocarbon, and as it burns, it carbonizes quite nicely. Um, so that's one possibility. You know, the other is uh, that, you know, people say you have to do this thing where you just smoke a quarter of a bowl for the first couple of bowls, and then you increase it to a half a bowl for the first couple of bowls and, until you get to a full bowl. The reason for that has to do with this making sure you got cake at the bottom, you know, which is important. Me, I always smoke to the bottom of the bowl. So I've just, over the years, just ignored all of that. I load up the pipe and I smoke it, and I smoke it all the way to the bottom of the bowl. I guess I am a little more conscientious of that the first time I smoke it. I want to make sure I do get all the way down there. And that brings up the second point. You know, what tobacco do you use? So it's important to me that I use a tobacco that I'm familiar with and that I know I'm going to be able to smoke all the way to the bottom. So I wouldn't try to break in a, a pipe with a, you know, a really heavy flake, for example, because that can be difficult to keep lit and you can get into trouble with it. Now, some people say you got to use Virginias to break in a pipe because they're higher in sugar content and that helps the cake form. Other people say it should be burly because it's cleaner and, you know, you're, you're getting a more, um, I don't know, tobacco-based cake or, or whatever. I just think it's important that you know the tobacco well. So if there's a favorite tobacco of yours that you smoke regularly, I'd recommend using that during the break-in period. So for me, it's a haunted bookshop. 
and I am going to load up my pipe with some haunted bookshop as I continue to talk about this. The pipe I'm going to smoke, I, I showed this to you last week, I believe, but it's this, um, another Talbert Linier Britannia. This is the Squat Bulldog, and this is the pipe I originally wanted. I just fell in love with this when I looked at it on Trevor's website, and I'll put a link below to his website and his YouTube channel. Uh, uh, I, I'm not a bulldog guy, but there's something about the squat bulldog and that raven's wing rustication that just really got me. And I wanted this, but then that billiard was there, and I'm a billiard guy, so I got that first. And and he made a video about this style, and I said, oh, heck, i got to get one. So this is what I'm going to be smoking today. And I'm going to load it with Haunted Bookshop because, again, it's a tobacco that I know well. And we will load that. Now, loading a pipe is, I guess it's an art, but it's not a very difficult art to learn. It's something that if you don't think about it the first few times you smoke a pipe, you're probably going to be miserable. But once you kind of get the feel for it, I, I don't know. There's all these different methods and stuff of packing. I, I just push the tobacco in and it feels right. The way I was taught was the three-step method. Um, and the way I was taught is politically incorrect, but I don't care. And that is you first pack like a child, you then, you know, for the first third of the bowl. The second third of the bowl, you pack like a woman. And the final third of the bowl, you pack like a man. <laughs> the idea is you're not compressing the tobacco at the bottom. And you're leaving a little bit of air down there for, uh, for the burning to occur at a reasonable rate. And to make sure you got a good draw. And one thing I will say, no matter what your packing method is, you always want to draw on it before you light it. And if it doesn't draw the way you think it should, empty it out and repack it. You don't want to struggle with a poorly packed pipe. All right, so let's light this up. This is the Maiden Smoke. I always do it too light because, in my opinion, it's important to get that layer of carbon, or layer of um, charcoal, I guess you could say, on the top. But again, if you're enjoying it, you're doing it right. All right. Hmm. Smoking beautifully. Very comfortable stem. I don't honestly remember if the first one had a bowl coating on it. I think it did. Um, this one also is bowl coated, which is fine. I get a little flavor off of that. I'm getting a little, I don't know what Trevor uses. And he probably won't tell us, because uh, that's one of the things that makers like to keep close to their chest, which is also fine. But I'm getting a little sweetness off of this. But the draw is perfect. This is going to be a good pipe. I'm going to... I'm going to be friends with this pipe. <laughs> so the next thing about breaking in, so what I just told you is, is really all you need to know. Use a tobacco that you are familiar with and make sure you get all the way to the bottom of the bowl for at least certainly the first pipe, first bowl. And I don't know, I'd probably say you want to do that at least five times just to get that cake for me. Obviously, it's not an exact science. But yeah, five times seems about right. Now, this gets into a whole different area of how long you need to go through a break-in period. And it gets into this idea of resting your pipes. Now, there are people that will not smoke the same pipe 
in the same day. There are people that will not smoke the same pipe more than once in a week. There are people like uh, my friends uh, Corvette Jim and Armchair Piper Ed that don't smoke the same pipe in a year because they have so darn many. Actually, my friend Jack's in that category too, although I think he I think he's got his favorites that he, he keeps in a pretty heavy rotation. I don't care about that. I think as long as you keep your pipe clean, you can smoke it as much as you want. Now I go easy when I'm breaking in, meaning I will not smoke this pipe again today. But I'll probably smoke it tomorrow. And maybe a couple of times this week. I keep this next to my, uh, or a pipe that I'm breaking in, I keep next to my chair upstairs where I, I do my smoking while watching TV or reading or whatever. And I'll pick it up like maybe every other day, load some haunted bookshop in it and smoke it. And I'll do that for a couple of weeks. And you get to the point where you, you know the pipe. You know, you, you understand it better. You have form the cake that you need to form. And it is important that you keep it clean. So I will, after I smoke it, I'll dump out the ash. I'll run a pipe cleaner through it. Uh, use a bristle pipe cleaner in the stomach and uh, then set it down for next time. And in a week or two, this will be behaving like any other pipe in my rotation. And then it can go into the rotation, which is why this fellow graduated today to Pegasus. Because <laughs> it's been nothing but haunted bookshop until this morning. This one will be nothing but haunted bookshop for a week or two until it's a part of me. And then I can do whatever I want with it. Kind of like when you get a new dog. You got to be really careful and you got to spend a lot of time with it in that formative stage. And then once the dog is yours, once it's been trained, once it understands you and you understand it, you, you can slack off and do whatever you want. Well, not whatever you want. But you know what I mean. Anyway, that's my method. It's pretty simple. Use the tobacco you like, smoke to the bottom of the bowl, and smoke it frequently until it works for you. And then you can, you know, if you've got a lot of pipes, maybe smoke it once a month. If you're crazy, like some of my friends I mentioned, you can smoke it once a year. It'll, it'll be there for you and it'll be the same. That's how I break in a pipe. So, got the usual Sunday routine this morning. Weeding, dogs, brushing. Uh, I'm going to go for a ride later today to check out a park with my wife. She'll probably want to do some shopping. Um, shop wise, I'm doing a little bit of stuff down here. I, I've actually got my woodworking bench cleared off now to the point where I can use it. And there's a mirror that fell off the wall. Uh, the mirror didn't break at all, but the frame cracked on it. So I'm working on uh, fixing that. I've got that clamped up right now with some glue. Got to figure out how I'm going to hang it again, because obviously the frame isn't going to take the, the weight of the mirror anymore. Uh, not that, not at that point where it was hanging. So I've got to put new hangers on it and figure out how to position them. That'll be fun. Now, 
nothing like relying on your knowledge of your, your sketchy knowledge of physics to uh, position a very large piece of glass above the ground in your house. I got a little bit of pipe work I'm doing. And uh, still working on uh, getting the shop organized. And I'm at a point now where it's a little frustrating because I got so much darn stuff and I feel like I have to organize it, but I just don't have the space because the stuff is in the space. And I keep thinking, well, I need more shelves, I need more cabinets, but you know. If half the stuff is going to get thrown away, But we'll get there. We'll definitely get there. Um, really want to get that new lathe, new to me lathe in, uh, so I can get back to doing some pipe work. So that's that's my main goal, and just getting a little area cleared out for that, which I'm I'm close to being done with. And the other problem is I'm reluctant to stop and do that because I know once I do that I'm going to want to work there and I'm going to want to you know do stuff and the rest of the stuff is just going to sit there so we'll see we'll see it's all good keeps me good keeps me busy keeps me off the streets anyway folks I am going to uh finish this pipe and uh, get on with my Sunday and I hope you all do the same so hope you have a great Sunday and a fantastic week ahead uh, we'll be back on Friday night with the live stream as uh, as always Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on the channel and uh, who knows something might pop up I'm, uh, I'm meeting a friend tomorrow maybe there'll be uh, a little bit of video or at least some pictures from that You'll know them when you see them. So thank you for watching. Like, comment, all that good stuff. Uh, it helps us get the word out, helps the community grow. So I appreciate it. And I thank you for taking the time to watch me. Well, until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. Mm -hmm.